What we're going to be going over here is a linear programming example where we're going to be setting up a production plan. And we'll just look at a six month time period here for say year 20X1. Okay, so let's start with our sales quantities here and our unit costs. And again, this is only, we're going to only be looking at one product here, product A, that we're going to be setting up this production plan on. Okay, so I want to look at here, I've got a table set up here. So on our first row across our top, that represents each of those monthly periods that we're going to be looking at month one through month six here. And under each one of those months here, we're going to have our different quantities that we have to deal with. So let's look at the first uh, month here, month one here. We have sale order quantities of, a certain number of sales orders here, our quantity of units that we're going to have to produce here of 1,180. And then each of the successive months here, two through six, I have the quantities shown here. And those are really, let's just say confirmed sales orders here that we're going to have to produce over that time period. And then underneath that, we have our cost per unit, and I've got regular production here. This is just regular part production here. We're not paying any overtime period. And then underneath that, we got the cost per unit here for overtime production for uh, manufacturing each of those products on a unit basis here for product day. So just looking at our first month here, our regular production cost is $50 per unit. And then if we build any in overtime here, $62 per unit. Okay, and then each of the successive months, I've got them shown here. The uh, regular production cost here, and then our overtime production cost on a unit basis. And then the next thing we have to deal with is we're going to have some inventory carrying costs. So at the end of the month, any ending inventory, we're going to have to pay, let's say, $10 per unit here as the carrying cost for that ending inventory. And that's the same here for each of those six months. And then we also have this uh, production constraint here. The maximum units that we can produce under regular production, that's a regular production cost, is 1,000 units. And then if we have to build any of those units in overtime, we can only build 600 units. And that's on a monthly basis here for each of the uh, months. And then we also have uh, some inventory constraints here. So in the first month here, we're going to have a beginning inventory of 150 units here of product A. But at the end of the period here, at the end of the six months, we're going to require 20, at least 20 units here in ending inventory here for product A. Okay, so those are the numbers that we have to deal with. All right, so now let's figure out our linear program here, and we'll start with our objective function here. So what we have to deal with is we have to determine the quantities that we're going to produce here for uh, on, based on regular production versus our overtime production. So we have to figure out each of the quantities for each of those months here that we're going to be producing. Number of regular, uh, number of units we can produce here in regular production versus overtime production. And then we also have one other cost that we have to deal with is that carrying cost, that inventory carrying cost that we have here on an ending inventory. So if we go down to our objective function here, what we have to do is we have to minimize those production costs. And I've got shown here as our variable x equals the units that we have to manufacture here. And then the y variable here is really the ending in number of units here in ending inventory. So in our objective function, we're going to have our unit cost here. Uh, and it's going to be for those six months here in regular production plus whatever we produce here in six months of our overtime, our requires overtime. Plus, we're going to also have some carrying costs here for each of those six months. All right, so just looking at, let's just go through this, step through this table here. So for our production costs here, regular, I've got them shown here, and this is how I've indexed it here. For each of those uh, regular production, I just do x11 here, subscript 11, and then for the next month, I would have x21, next month x31, and so forth, x41 and x51. So that's for regular production. And then for overtime production, I'm indexing it x12, no, excuse me, yeah, x12, x22, x32. So for regular production, you have to come up with some scheme here, and you have to assign a variable for each of those months for both regular production that you're going to produce plus any overtime production. So you end up with uh, 12 different variables here, six for regular production and six for overtime production. I'm just using this scheme here and you have to have some scheme when you set it up in your linear programming or some matrix here to determine, keep those 
uh, you have to assign an actual variable or a quantity for each of the regular production and overtime in each of those periods. Okay, so let's, what did I go back? Let's just go back to the first one here. For month one, we have $50 here for every unit in regular production, 62 for overtime production. So I'd have 50 times X11 regular plus 62 times at whatever units in X12 here for overtime production. And then look at the next month here, it's 52 for regular, 58 for overtime. And those are unit costs here. So again, go back down to our, we'd have plus 52 times X21 here regular, plus 58 here times X22 here for overtime production. And just look at this next month here, what is it, 51 and 69. So you're gonna get $51 here times whatever units here in regular production, X31 plus 69 here uh, times whatever units for X32 here in overtime production. And we'd proceed on in the same fashion here, same fashion. Uh, month four, 55 here for regular, 78 for overtime. Go down here, that would be plus again. Remember, everything gets added here, plus 55 here. Regular X41 plus 78 here, overtime X42. 70, these are the dollar amounts times whatever units that we're going to be manufacturing and just to proceed on in the same fashion here for the remaining months okay so that's our production manufacturing cost but now we have to deal with that inventory cost here that carrying cost of ten dollars per unit for whatever units we have in ending inventory so this is the case where we're going to assign another variable here and our inventory we'll just call y1 plus y2 and up through y6 so what you're going to do is just take that carrying cost time each one of those units that you have here in ending inventory. I'm just taking 10, in my case, the linear program, 10 times the quantity of Y1 plus Y2 and so forth through Y6. Okay, so that's our objective function, to minimize production costs and base, and also it includes those carrying costs. So we've got tw uh, six variables here, uh, X number of units we have to produce here in regular production, six variables for overtime production plus those six uh, months here, six, six different variables, Y1 through Y6 for our carrying cost. All right, so now we have to come up with our constraints here. So we're gonna have some monthly inventory constraints here. So again, I got it laid out here in table form here. So this is how you'd have to put it into your linear program. So remember, let's just step through our, our program here line by line. So we have some beginning inventory here in 1.1. So we have 150 units here in beginning inventory plus whatever we're producing here in regular X11 plus overtime whatever units we'd be producing here X12. And then we have to subtract that from the orders that we have here for the period. In this case for that first month 1180. So that you take plus 150, plus whatever units for regular and overtime, and then you subtract from it 100, uh, 1180, the number of orders for the month, and that's gonna equal your ending inventory. And remember, in your linear program, you have to put in the equal here. It has to be an equa equality here. Now it can't be an inequality greater than or less than and so forth. It has to be an equal here in this case. Okay, so that's for our first month here. So our next month here, uh, this ending inventory Y1, becomes the beginning inventory here in the next month, uh, month two here. So it'd be Y1 plus, again, regular production, 2-1 plus whatever here for overtime, X2-2, two, two, same scheme as we did up above here in our objective function. And then we subtract from it the orders for the month. That was 1,220 that we have, and that equals Y2. So then, okay, so now Y2, our ending inventory for month two, becomes our beginning inventory here in month three. Y, that Y2 plus then X31, X plus X32 minus our ending in our orders for the month, 1,300, that equals Y3, month three here. Okay, we could pre produce, you see the scheme that we're going through here, but you'd have to sit this, put this into your linear program here as the constraints here. So you do the same here for months Y4, Y5, and Y6. But now we get down to this last month here, Y6, and let's just say it's June of the year here. So we're gonna have to have ending inventory. Remember, we said that we need uh, at least 20 units here in ending inventory in Y6. So you're going to put Y6 is has to be greater than or equal to 20 units. So this is your inequality that you have to include here as a constraint in your uh, in your linear program. Okay, so that was our monthly 
inventory constraints. Now let's just go over. We've got another constraint here, and that was to do with the maximum production capacity. So for regular production, remember we can only produce a thousand units per month here in regular production. And that I'm showing here in a table X11 and X21 and so forth up through X61 here. And that's less than and equal to 1000. So this is an inequality. It has to be less than or equal to. And then for overtime production, again, it's index X12 through X62 here, but we can only produce 600 per month here. So it's less than or 600 units per month here. So we've got our capacity constraints here for uh, production capacity strain constraints. And then we had our monthly inventory constraints here. Okay, so that's our linear program, objective function with the different constraints that we have. And then the other one other thing I didn't mention here, you assume there's a non-negativity here in any of the units here. You can't be producing a negative number of units, so you have to feed that into your linear program. You have to, have to put in a non-negative constraint here for any of the units. X, units in X and your ending inventory can't be negative either in all your units here in Y. Okay, so those are the, that's your linear program. Okay, so let's just look at some results that we have. Okay, so I run that program here and this is the production plan, the linear programming solution. So I come up with a minimum cost here, 427,860 based on those constraints and our sales uh, requirements that we have. So I've got them shown here, X11. And this is, I got regular production here, overtime production here for each of those months here. So you can, you can just see what they go. Okay, regular production. Now you would think that you would manufacture as many units as you can here in regular production because it has a lower cost than overtime here. But with that carrying cost that you have in, then it can throw everything off. So I'm just showing the numbers here. So that first month here, regular production, 1,000 units, 30 units here in overtime. Next month here, 1,000 units again. That's the maximum we can produce here based on that constraint. Only 1,000 units capacity here in regular time, 600 units here in overtime. Okay, so that's why we've got our 1,000s here. It sort of makes sense in this case. You can see here for that third month, we produced a whole lot of units here in the second month here for over time 520, but then we get down to this third month here. Well, we've produced the max we can here for our regular production, but we're doing zero here over time here in the third month. But we get a bounce up to 400 here in the fourth month. Now, what might seem a bit strange here is when we get up to that fifth month here, and I haven't quite figured that out here. In regular production, we're only producing 520 units. And over time 600 units. So you'd think we'd want to be producing up to the max here in uh, regular time up to a thousand units here because it's cheaper to do that in regular production than the overtime production. But based on our linear program it did not work. But that's the things you have to look for here. And then you get down to that last month here again we're producing max a thousand units and for what we capacity here in regular time 600 here in overtime. Okay. So this was the only thing that looks a bit strange. And then our ending inventory, Y1, month one, zero, month two here, 300 units, uh, month four, a uh, three and four here, zero units, and then month five, 120 units, and then month six. Remember, we have to have at least 20 units. Well, we got equals 20 here. Okay, so that's for our linear program that we figured out. Now you could do a little bit of sensitivity analysis here or do some other check -in. So I'm just saying, let's say we can move our regular production, instead of a thousand units, we can actually uh, build 1500 units. Again, that's gonna, you can see our minimum cost has gone down from 420,860 to 404,260. And that's because you pay less, you can build more units here at a lower cost here. You, end up with a whole lot less overtime. So just looking at it, for these first four months, you can see we're building more units here in regular production, zero units here in overtime. But then we get down to this fifth month again here, it looks a bit strange here, where we're producing more here in regular, or in overtime than we are regular production. Those are the things you have to look for. And again, then the second month here, or the sixth month here. But then you can see here, so those are the things you have to look for and try to make some understanding out of them to make it make sense out of it. what why exactly is that is that because of the carrying cost and so forth 
And then if you look at the ending inventory, you can see we got zero ending inventory in each of those cases. But that last month, Y6, we have to have at least 20 units in that we have here. Okay, so that's just a case where you just you might just put, that's the nice thing about this linear programming, you can just change percentages and quantities and so forth and it'll crank out different numbers here. So we increased our regular or our cheaper production time from 1,000 units to 1,500 units. So that's the capacity, that's just, that's the increase here in, in plant capacity to build them. So if we go down here and one other thing, let's just say we have that regular production here and let's just say our carrying costs, say from $10, we reduce it down to $5 here per unit. Again, your minimum cost is gonna go down. We what, so 420, this is what we have our regular plan here, 427,860 versus 422,280. Makes sense because we're ending inventory here, we're paying less on a per unit basis. We cut it in half from $10 to $5 per unit. All right, so if you just go down here and look at your units, well, I just sort of have them highlighted what might change here. Uh, with the lower carrying cost, month five, we're building maximum 1,000 here versus 520. This seems to make a little bit more sense here. And it, you can see that's probably why we ended up here with producing less units here in regular production versus overtime here because we, it was to do with that carrying cost. So that's what I reduced the carrying cost. And by doing that here, I increased my first or my regular cost of production up to maximum capacity. And also the, the overtime is at maximum, maximum capacity. So you can see just by dealing with that, you can see that our carrying costs did affect how many units we were producing here in this fifth month. And then just going down, the only other thing here, six months we have a little different here as far as lesser, lesser units here in overtime here. Because, be, because we have that lower carrying cost. So you can see how that affected. And then for ending inventory, you can see the same thing here. You've got, you're carrying more inventory here in Y3 or month three here. A regular production, you only had zero. And now you're up to 400 here. Y2, you went up a little bit from 300 to 380. And then Y5, month five here, you went up from 120 to 600 units in ending inventory. So you end up with more units here in ending inventory because your carrying cost is less here. And then again, Y6, we have to have those 20 units here, minimum 20 units, and that's what we have here. Okay, so you've seen how you might be able to uh, use some linear programming here for setting up a production plan. And you'd have to, in this case, we had to know our sales order quantities and our cost of production, both regular and any overtime production. And then we also took, uh, had to include some production constraints. And then we also had that inventory carrying charges, which would be pretty typical that you'd have to look at when you're uh, looking at uh, production plans and so forth here. So this is a good example just to understand a little bit more about how linear programming can help you setting up your different uh, production plans and so forth.